So and I understand the point, you know, you want to be ready, so, so live right, because Jesus could come tomorrow. But that's not what they were saying. They was like, Jesus be here tomorrow. And you could tell they wasn't really like investing in some of the everyday because the hope was, what, Jesus be here tomorrow. So why put in any other work? Right, but where are we rushing to? Like, where are you going? See, see, that's why we got to study the Bible out. Where are you going? Because religion has trained us to leave earth. Why? Everything you hear a lot of religion is all about, yeah, yeah we're going to, um, but it's a song though. It's a song like, yeah, 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 I'm going up yonder, yeah, to be with my Lord. Right, right, but, but, so we're trained to flee from our own place, the place that God put us. Um, so you're not supposed to be praying to leave the planet. According to the scripture, you're supposed to pray for the kingdom of heaven to come to earth. So, so why are we rushing out of here? I mean, study the scripture out. The scripture talks about a new Jerusalem. It talks about a new earth. You know what I'm saying? So where are you going? It talks about living a thousand years here on earth. Well, so so we, we're going up yonder? <laughs> where are you going? Because this, the, cause we're supposed to be uh, creating a territory, a kingdom in this earth realm. So we're going to leave the assignment to go back to what God sent us here for something. I just want to give you, just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you scripture, chapter and verse. You know, this is, this, is, this is what happens though. When we start to think like that, we may have religion, but we don't have what it takes to quench our thirst. And that's the kingdom. The kingdom is what it takes to quench your thirst. So sometimes we have scripture. Sometimes we have doctrine. Sometimes we have our ritual of coming to service every Sunday. But we don't have the kingdom. We don't have what, what, what God has designed to quench our thirst. The scripture says in Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things will be added. We don't have the very thing that we need to sustain our life, to fulfill our life. Yeah, and that was Jesus' Jesus's greatest opposition. He taught the kingdom, but religion opposed him um, because they didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't want, they didn't want to accept what he was teaching because, see, their whole thing is they can get you on a by and by because that's how they build those big synagogues and stuff. It was on penance. So they would make you feel, okay, you commit this sin, you're going to hell. You won't be able to go to heaven, and we can help you to get to heaven. You just pay you know, 17 shekels, three Hail Marys, and we'll, we'll relieve you of that sin. And so they just start, that's why Jesus turned over the, the tables in the temple, the money changers, because they were trying to make people pay for their salvation. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 but, but they wasn't teaching them the kingdom. They was teaching them to follow this religious principle. So they set up laws, they set up laws, and if you break the law, then you pay this. You break the law, you pay this. But Jesus started coming. He was like, "Oh no, no, no! They told you this, but this is what this is what it's this is what the Bible means." And so they're like, "He messing up our money." I mean, literally, literally that's what they they were like. He's messing up our money, so we got to get rid of him. He came in towns and, and actually healed people. It's like, no, we got to get him out of the town, man. He's messing up our business. You know, some of us are doctors. We get paid on these people thinking that we can cure them. Remember, even the, the young lady that, that touched the hem of his garment, it says that she gave, she, sold, she gave all that she had to physicians and was not healed. And then she says, if I can touch him, I'll be healed. Jesus healed her. It's like, oh, man, this dude's healing folk. He's actually showing them signs, wonders, and miracles that there's really a God. What's that going to do for our business? Even the same thing happened in Paul's time, after Jesus' time. You know, young lady was a... a astrologist, soothsayer, whatever, she was going around telling fortunes and stuff like that. Paul cast that witch out of her, and the people that was making money off her was like, man, this guy comes in here, he's costing us our money. Even when they would, see, see even, every time they, sh they found out there was a real God and there was a real kingdom, people lost business because some people were building idols. They was making money on building the idols. They was like, man, do you know, Listen, man, that's what I do for a living. I build stone and cut carved stone. and these, I make a lot of money because these people got me building them gods all week. Now, now, they come with a true god that's not made of clay, that's not made of stone. I'm losing money. 
the silversmiths and the goldsmiths like, man, I just made like three golden calves last week and got paid. Now these people are going to come in and tell them there's a real God. Now nobody don't want me to make them no gold. No, no gold gods. No gold idols. It was about money. It's about money in, in, in our time, too. In 2012, too, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know people would be about money. Let's look at Isaiah 9. Because cause on earth as it is in heaven, God is a tr a trying to establish his government here on earth. He's not in a rush for us to get back to heaven. That's why when people, you know, there's people that, you know, sometimes because of uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, they actually leave before their time. Um, but that's not what God's original plan, because the scripture says he's meant none to perish. That's what the Bible says. But Isaiah 9 says... Uh, uh, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, uh, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon, the, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it in judgment with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. It says, of his government, there shall be no end. So it says he's going to come, he's going to establish his government, his kingdom, his rule in this earth realm, but it says there shall be no end. It didn't say, ah, I'll just do it for a couple of years and there's going to be over. It said, it shall be no end. It's supposed to be for an, an everlasting establishment. And then, what else did I have? Another scripture. Luke 1. Let's look at Luke 1 real quick. Kind of a parallel, but we figure give you Old Testament and New Testament since some people need both. That's not what I was going to say. Um, Luke 1. Uh, verse 33, it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now this was, this was the Holy Spirit talking to Mary that I'm going to give you, well, let's see. Uh, verse 30, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Um, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So we're in a rush to get out of here, but, but this, this kingdom is supposed to be established here. And it says the government shall be on his, upon his shoulders. Yeah, the government shall be upon his shoulders, uh, uh, actually, when it says the government, it's really referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a, the governor. So remember, I was explaining to you that uh, we're going to get to this next week because I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm going to just go through the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit here on the earth. But, the, but just for the sake of today's conversation, the Holy Spirit is the governor. So the scripture says that we're, um, we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So what, so what God did is he sent Jesus in the earth realm Filled with the Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit, the governor within them. But the governor, the governor that's supposed to help us to live this life, because the scripture says the Holy Spirit will show us things to, to come. You know, he would teach us all things. What was he teaching us? He's teaching us how to operate in the kingdom. So he's like, you guys are living in this life, and you're living as if you have limits, as if you have no power. You're living as if actually debt has power over you or or lack has power over you, but no, 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 you're, you're a kingdom kid. So the Holy Spirit shows you things to come and he teaches you all things, how to operate as a kingdom kid. You know, it's like, why would you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, become an heir to the kingdom of God and not benefit, not have the benefits of the kingdom of God? You know, that's, that's like you getting a high power stereo and uh, you have like uh, 500 watts and you're using five. Because you don't know how to work the, the system, you know what I'm saying? So you're kind of like just using five. Like they used to pick with me in college because I used to keep it, my stereo on 10. And they used to be like, and go to sleep with my headphones on. So it's like, why would you go to sleep with 200 watts pumping in your ear on 10? I said, look on the numbers. I said, you got one through 10. I said, 10 is for somebody. I said, if it was just supposed to go up to three, it would be just one through three. Why is 10 on there? Just for show? 
somebody's going to use 10, right? Just happen to be me. I'm 10. 10. They made 10 for me, right? So I'm not a proponent of going to sleep with a 200 watt system pumping the years like that, but that's kind of where I was in college. All right, so, 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 but, but I wanted to maximize everything in that system. So God is saying, do you want to maximize your, your life? Because some of the, some, the, the life that some of us are living, we didn't need to accept Jesus. I mean, you can, some, some of the things we're doing, we could do without Jesus. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not dogging Jesus. I'm just trying to give you, think about it. If we're going to take on the kingdom, then we should be adding some, some, some kingdom stuff, some kingdom rule, right? some supernatural stuff, some power. You know, I came that you might have life, not just life, but and that life more abundantly, John 10, 10. So we should be adding some abundance or something. Should be something more going on in our life than just what? Than just the everyday stuff that we can do in our own control. Because if you're going to keep controlling your, your life or, a lot, or living a limited life, uh, a lack of leaping type life, a lack of leaping, leaping type life, you can do that without Jesus. But it's a kingdom life. It's where you rule and you reign. It goes back to the beginning. In the beginning, God gave us dominion, right? He gave, gave us dominion. He said, you have dominion over everything. Fish of the sea, fowl of the air, everything. You just have dominion. That's why when Adam said, elephant. It's an elephant. He's just speak, speaking things into existence. The same way because we was made in God's image after God's likeness. And God just starts speaking th stuff into existence. He said, let there be light. There is light. Let there be a firmament. There was a firmament. See, that sounds far-fetched, but see, we got to get kingdom-minded. So as the scripture says, you know, you, if you sell not doubt in your heart and you can have whatsoever you say, that sounds crazy to a person that's not kingdom-minded or haven't calibrated their mind to how kingdom operates. But, but, but if you just step back, you don't even need scripture. Look at your life. Look at what you've been saying and look at what you've been getting. Test it. That's what I did. Like with the Bible, when I first started learning stuff, I was like, let, let me, let's go to that scripture. I know. I always get a, the word to God and let him do what he want to do with it. So let's go to Mark 11. I mean, so I know Genesis says God spoke things into existence. First 26 scriptures or so. And then God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. What was the likeness that God made us in? He made us to do what he did. To, 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 to not be bound by uh, uh, fixed principles or the laws of the earth or gravity or, or all that stuff. He, he said, let there be light, there was light. You know, let there be a firmament, there was firmament. God just spoke things into existence, so he made his image after his likeness. Proverbs 6, 2, you're snared by the words of your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we have power in our tongue like God had power in his tongue. Right? You're held captive by what you say. All right, so then over here, Mark 11 is an example of that. Mark 11, uh, verse 22, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Now, this was after they was, they was walking in the morning, and everything designed has a purpose. So even the trees, so there's a, there's a fig tree. Jesus was hungry. He saw leaves on a fig tree. He's like, oh, I'm going to give me something to eat. So he went over because the, the tree looked like it had figs. You know how some of us look like we're going to produce fruit, but there's no fruit coming out of us. So Jesus seen a fig tree. He was like, oh, I'm going to give me something to eat. He went over there and there was no figs. He was like, well, you're not fulfilling your purpose. So he says, I'm going to curse you. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter. Since you're not producing purpose, why are you, why are you taking up space? So they walked away. They come back, you know, maybe the next day or so. They look, they go, master, the tree that you cursed is withered, is dead. Wow. And Jesus said here in verse 22, this was his response to him. He says, uh, have, uh, Jesus answered, said unto them, well, verse 21, well, verse 20. It says, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree with thou curses with his words is withered away. And Jesus answering and said unto them, have faith in God. So he's breaking down the kingdom principle of how that took place. He says, number one, don't have faith in what I did. Have faith in the source in which it came from.